fighting game characters archetypes and what each one mean in one of my latest videos i actually made a mistake and received some feedback on how i did not go in depth on what each character type means as in rush down zone and show those so on and so on hey yo at us ah, ah. go ahead and put him in the live footage play bye so of course when it comes down to fighting games you have all kind of types you have rush down you have zoning charge characters grapplers shoto so that's what today's video is about i'm going to be breaking each one down in my own words so of course let's start off with shoto's the iconic two that you always think about ryu and ken you have sakura kage akuma and the list goes on so what does shoto actually mean and what do they offer this is pretty much a well-rounded character a jack of all trades you can't go wrong they have just about everything good walk speed good buttons good range just strong fundamentals right they have a fireball they have a tatsu which is a forward advancing special move they have a dp in case the opponent wants to jump they have an answer for everything this character doesn't lack nothing i feel like the matchup spread is pretty even zoners might give you an issue because of course their game is to keep you out but of course that's where the strong fundamentals come into play at as long as you play patient you pick your spots right you throw your fireballs you dp the anti-air you can get the ball rolling as soon as you get a knockdown show those a good introduction character where you pretty much cannot go wrong with this option when it comes down to pick affirming you always want to make sure that you have random guard on and pretty much just practice reacting to the hit and confirming it off a of low forward of course every character has a different window buffer for low hit confirms i'm not the best at hit confirming but I'm, I'm pretty decent at it um there's different ways of doing it you can um use the hit animation or you can use the actual stun bar Un understanding when to throw fireballs the one two rule is very important as soon as you throw one or two fireballs nine times out of ten they might jump so be ready to dp all right time for the next one baby you already know what time it is charge to the characters my most favorite one charge characters this is pretty much characters that are pretty heavy on defense why because in order for you to get their specials out you have to hold down back so you have characters like Barol, urian blanca gal gal of course the charge time is about 1.5 to 2 seconds in order to get a charge move fully cocked and loaded and ready to release right once you hold down back for that amount of time, you press forward and the punch, or maybe forward and the light kick, depending on what the special calls for, and then you release the special. Go ahead. When it comes down to charge counters, we have pretty good normals as far as range go. All right? We want to sit back, control the spacing, and make sure your opponent gets very aggravated. We want to really make them have to come to us. Bully them with whatever you have. If you're playing ball rolls, you're throwing dash straights. If you're playing Gal, you're throwing Sonic boom, 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 boom. And if you're playing Honda, you're throwing headbutts, right? Our goal is to just aggravate the opponent and then make them pay once they decide to do something and make them feel bad for doing that because they just got punished. Charge characters, just because we're able to sit back and charge doesn't mean that we can't get off of that charge and actually fight without normal. So this is actually the part where I feel like a lot of people get confused at because they feel like just because they have to charge, when do they actually play neutral when do they move around when do they do stuff right most charge counters i feel have good movement Pretty okay you have roundhouse that's plus on block is god plus three medium kick plus two crouching medium plus two you have buttons to play neutral right so just because you're a charge counter that dash straight should be your that last bullet that you could just throw out there in case you want to just offset the neutral a little bit right but use them buttons man don't be scared to just fully play down back all day that's cool and all but you don't have to do that that's just another layer to your defense and offense just to get your opponent guessing all right so this one might really grab people's attention so i hope y'all ready for this mix up characters this is pretty much the characters that have your opponent guessing for days that sounds good to you huh whether it's going to be a left right a high low a command grab or throw shimmy lemmy emmys so on and so on so we have characters like mika g laura can't can't forget about laura so mika got command grabs for those who don't know a command grab is something that you cannot tech in order to stop this you have to neutral jump back dash or even be shifts right that's how you stop it so just imagine thinking that a command grab is coming what do you open yourself up to get hit by to get hit by you set yourself up to get hit by lows because it actually stuffs the jump 
and a potential back dash. Say I'm scared of the command grab and I want a back dash, but my opponent decides I can go for a meaty. Right? That's how you open your opponent up. You get them scared of something, you show them that you're willing to do it, and then you just make their mind guess. Right? Mo guesses. Now, normally, heavy mix-up characters, they tend to have a slight issue with actually getting in. They have to play this slow, neutral mind game until they can find the answer. They might have some sort of gimmick, like a charge of roundhouse, where they're taking a chance at this. Because, of course, you can see the charge, and then you can stuff it on startup. They have uh, baits for the anti-air. Okay, there it is, right? This this move right here. Base the DP, no, base the anti-air. So they have to do gimmicks in order to score that knockdown in order to get in. So neutral is normally kind of rough for these type of characters, but they could find their ways somehow, some way. Your best bet is to stop this character and play perfect neutral. Because once you get knocked down and they get on you, yeah, you're about to guess. You better hope you can guess right or go for a DP that you pray actually hits them and don't get baited. You have rush down characters. What it means? Exactly what it sounds like. Rush down. Get on your opponent. Stuff them. Don't give them no time to think. Something similar to a mix up character, but a rush down character doesn't necessarily have a command grab, which is what a mix up really carries over to the next level. So you have characters like Kage, Akuma, normally the glass cannon characters that can't really take a hit. All right, so Rushdown, they have amazing walk speed. Do you see how fast he's walking across the stage? This is really godlike. Like this is one of the best walk speeds in the game. Untouched, they have good speed, amazing combo potential, and they have everything that's needed in order to get to your opponent, make them guess, and just completely overwhelm them. Kage actually has Red EX Fireball, which is a multi-hidden fireball, and it's also plus six on block. There we go. You have Heavy Tatsu, which is plus three on block. Heavy Tatsu has a long startup, meaning you can interrupt it, but it's plus three on block if it actually gets in. You have Medium Tatsu. Well, me Medium Stump, my bad. Medium Stump, which is negative two. It actually has a slight gap to where if they try and jab, they could get counter hit, then you can affirm it. And Light is a true strain, but it's negative four. You won't see too many Kage's doing this because if it's done, they could get punished. So that's where the rush down mind game comes in at. You're either gonna respect my heavy tattoo or you're gonna get hit with the medium and decide on where you wanna go from there. Yeah, so a, <coughs> a, a true tick throw is pretty much you're throwing out a button that's plus enough to where a throw actually beats a jab or any sort of match. And Another thing that a rushdown character actually succeeds at is having a way to just bait stuff, aka dive kick. If you get caught trying to anti-air and I dive kick, you're about to eat a counter and confirm. Um, good dash speed. Um, nonsense when it comes down to V trigger. You see? Yeah, Kage is pretty versatile. You can't go wrong with any sort of V skill, V trigger setup. Something to think about. Yes, you have good walk speed but you kind of lack range on your button. So as you can see, Kage is kind of stubby. This move doesn't go as far. This move is pretty good. Me medium kick is pretty nice. Fierce is probably your furthest reaching one, right? So they lack range, but because they have good walk speed, it actually makes up for this. So normally if you're going against a character like Balrog or somebody that's meant to keep you away, you're gonna find it kind of rough to get in because their job is to keep you away, your job is to get in and rush them down. Next one is actually zoning characters. Zoning is to play perfect keep away. If I'm right here, I wanna keep you at least right here. I don't want you nowhere near me. My job is to keep you at bay 24 seven. Make you get aggravated, make you take risks, and then I punish you for just about everything you do. We have characters like Monat, Falk, Rose, Delsum. So to be honest, this is probably the most saltiest archetype across all fighting games. Nobody likes to be zoned out. Nobody likes not having a chance to do damage on you if they're playing a get in close type of character, right? So your job is to find out where your character's sweet spot is at and then just stay there 24 seven. This is where I wanna stay at mixing in low whip, medium whip, and then of course I have high whip in case they ever try to jump. Now in a special case, 
of Street Fighter V, zoners actually have some up close good pressure. This actually brings the character in while being plus one, right? So just because I'm a zoner, that doesn't mean I don't have stuff in order to make you pay once we're actually up close. Characters in this game that's supposed to zone have the benefit of both styles. Delson is the same way. Just imagine somebody who's able to get in close, do damage, do pressure, and then go right back to zone. Sit back, relax, and aggravate your opponent. That's the motive, that's the key to a zone type character. The next character archetype that I'm pretty sure everybody is gonna love. Are you ready? Subscribing to the YouTube channel. We benefit from good content. Five uploads a week. You won't miss a beat. The road to 100K is started. Next archetype is actually grapplers. These are normally the big body slow characters where your job is to grab your opponent. Nothing else, nothing more. Just grab them for their life. Now, of course they have mix ups. Of course they have options in order to make your opponent have to guess. So of course this character is actually Big Geef Ball. Big Geef and Alex. So we're gonna go ahead and demonstrate with Big Geef Ball. So the downside to this is that these characters are normally slow. They lack mobility. They're more like a tank. You have a big help pool and of course you wanna get in close on your opponent. So if you're going against Monat, I pray for you. If you're going against Delsum, I pray for you. If you're going against Poison, just I pray for you. Your job is to get in close and grab them and just hit them with the grab if I could do it. Okay, there we go. SPD. And of course you have other options. Yeah. This is actually a good throw bait. You, you see a good amount of people do it on Wake Up. It actually has armor. So if you don't respect it, you will get grabbed. Oh wait, no. There we go. So of course this is the hard read. If you feel like they're gonna jump and you get the read on it, you jump in there and you grab them for their life. There we go. Wait, now of course you do have V skill which allows you to flex, absorb some hits, and you know, bait your opponent that way. Normally, like I said, characters wanna stay away from you, they don't wanna be nowhere near you. But your job is to get near them and give them a nice big bear hug. You dig what I'm saying? Last but not least, this is an actual archetype, all right? This ain't the subscribe archetype, this is an actual archetype. This is the one where you pretty much wanna just troll your opponent, play around with them, and just get them aggravated. Yes, we have a character by the name of Dan. He's a joke character. But, in the sense of Street Fighter V, he's actually a force to be reckoned with. Uh, I don't know what game he first got introduced in, I don't know how he was in Street Fighter 4, but the Street Fighter 5 vibes that I get from him, he's able to joke around with you, but he also has a serious side in case you want to get down to business. Yeah, see? Imagine just getting trolled by this all day. Imagine losing to this. Yeah, you gonna feel some type of way. He's actually able to cancel his animation into another button if I stop sucking. Things, things get pretty pressure heavy with him. So, it's pretty much nothing else to say on this. Your job is to just joke around with this character or get serious with him. And of course you have a good one bar V trigger where he actually throws a fireball that's kind of slow moving. You know. I actually have a question for you. Do you, you remember in the first part of this video, I stated that I received some feedback on one of my latest videos where I didn't go in depth, which caused this video to be to be created. If you actually want to check out that video, it's a beginner's guide to Street Fighter V. It actually showcases how a new player can get started with this game and where they actually need to go in order to get better if they're willing to get better. That's the video right there.